today's book is Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. It's written by Russell Hoban with pictures by Lillian Hoban. Christmas was coming and it was coming fast. It was coming to the town where the house is huddled with their cozy windows shining in the winter dusk. It was coming to the country where the snow lay drifted up against the barns and the firewood was all stacked beside the houses. And it was coming to the river and the little rundown place where Emmett Otter and his mother lived near Frogtown Hollow. Christmas was coming, but money was more scarce than ever. Emmett Otter's father was dead and his mother took in washing. There was no electricity out in Frogtown Hollow and Mrs. Otter did all her washing with a washboard and a wash tub all by hand. Emmett rode up and down the river from Turtle Bend to Osprey Point, picking up the laundry that Ma's customers left out on their boat landings and he delivered it when it was done. Emmett hauled the water and he did the chores. He cut the firewood and he stacked it. He went out with the tool chest that Pa had left him and he did odd jobs around the neighborhood. And every day he went out fishing. So there was always something on the table between the two of them. Emmett and his mother paid the rent and scraped along somehow. But it was always hard going and this year was harder than ever. The crops hadn't been good and the sawmill down the river had been slow and Many of the animals were out of work. Housewives who used to give the wash to Mrs. Otter were doing it themselves. Grown animals, like Jake Beaver and Grover Muskrat, who'd been laid off at the mill, were doing most of the odd jobs that Emmett used to get. We'll get by somehow, Emmett and his mother used to say to each other. We always have. But they were tired of just getting by. Last year, I gave Emmett a muffler that I'd knitted, said Mrs. Otter to Irma Coon. And the year before, it was mittens. Nothing wrong with mufflers and mittens, Alice, said Irma Coon. It's the thought that counts. I know all about that, said Mrs. Otter, but it's been such a rock bottom life for so long. Just once, I, at least, I'd like to bust out with some real glorious Christmas for Emmett. Something shiny and expensive. That's a bad year for that, said Irma Coon. It's always bad year, said Alice Otter. And she went on with her washing. Ma's never had it easy, Emmett said to Charlie Beaver. We've never had much even when Pa was alive, what with him being a traveling man always up and down the river selling snake oil. He'd be gone for weeks on end sometimes. And when he did show up, he never brought much money with him. Ma never complained, though. She said if Pa was willing to take a chance on snake oil, she was willing to take a chance on him. I wish I could fix it so she didn't have to do any more washing. And if I can't do that, at least I'd like to give her one real good Christmas. There's no odd jobs this year, said Charlie. I can't make a nickel. My sisters haven't had any luck with Christmas cards or cookies either. Maybe it'll be a better Christmas next year. Some year, it's got to be. This year, said Emmett. Last year, I made Ma a sewing box. And the year before, I carved a pie crimper. Sometimes, she's got to have something fine and fancy that costs money, or I don't know what I'll do. Money's hard to come by, said Charlie. And he and Emmett both went off to do their chores. When work was finished for the day, Emmett and his mother always went down the slide that Pa had built. In the summer, they went off the end of the slide and into the river with a big splash. In the winter, they slid down the slide and across the ice, whooping and laughing. But today, they slid down quietly, both of them wondering what was to be done about Christmas. And in the evening, they read out loud to each other by candlelight the way they always did, but neither one was paying attention to the book. Ma was thinking about a present for Emmett, and Emmett was thinking about a present for Ma. And after they finished reading, Ma and Emmett sang together. They sang Down the Slide with Dora, 
swim in Nellie home, the bathing suit that Grandma Otter wore. We'll go fishing in the moonlight. And they ended up with their favorite hymn, Downstream Where the River Meets the Sea. And Mrs. Otter had a lovely voice, and Emmett remembered her telling him that she had played the piano when she was a girl. Emmett wondered how many odd jobs it would take to buy Ma a piano. And he knew that he would probably never in his life be able to save up that much money. But instead of a piano, but the idea of a piano stayed in his mind and kept on growing. Ma was thinking too. She was remembering how Emmett had looked at a beautiful secondhand guitar with mother of pearl inlays in the store window in town. Ma thought about how many washes it would take to buy that guitar for Emmett. She tried to put it out of her mind, but she could not. She wanted Emmett to have that guitar for Christmas. She didn't know what she could do about it. Now, Christmas was just two weeks off when Ma and Emmett heard some news that interested them both. Ma heard it from Henry Hetty Muskrat, and Emmett heard it from Hetty's son, Harvey. Fifty dollars cash, said Harvey. How's that for a prize? Prize for what? said Emmett. The Merchants Association's putting on a talent show in Waterville, said Harvey. What kind of talent? Emmett asked. Anything, said Harvey. Singing, dancing, playing instruments, reciting, acrobatics, juggling, anything at all. Have you got any talent? Dunno, said Emmett. Have you? I've got a kazoo, said Harvey. Wendell Coon knows how to blow a jug. Charlie Beaver has a cigar box banjo. We could have what they call a jug band, jug band maybe. We could call it the Frogtown Hollow Jug Band. All we need is a washed up bass. A washed up bass, said Emmett. That's right, said Harvey. You set a wash tub upside down, stand a broom handle on the rim, run a string from the top of the broom handle, down through a little hole in the center of the tub, and you strum it like a regular bass fiddle. Little hole in the center of the tub, said Emmett. The trouble is, once you make a hole in the tub, it won't hold water anymore. Fifty dollars cash, said Harvey. You could buy a lot of new wash tubs with your share. Emmett thought about it. If the Frogtown Hollow Jug Band won the prize, his share would be $12.50. And with that, he could buy a new tub for a dollar and a half and put $11 down on a second-hand piano and pay out the rest. When's the talent show, he asked Harvey. Two days before Christmas, said Harvey. I'll think about it, said Emmett. And he walked slowly home. And while Harvey was telling Emmett about the talent show, Harvey's mother was telling him, Emmett's mother, I wish I had some talent. Hetty Muskrat said, we sure could use the money. Guess we all could, Mrs. Otter said, wondering whether there would be any really good singers in the show. That night at dinner, Ma and Emmett could hardly look each other in the eye. When they took turns reading, they kept losing place in the book. And when they got around to singing downstream where the river meets the sea, they both choked up a little. The next morning at breakfast, the otter house was empty. Ma's wash tub was not in its regular place in the kitchen and the broom was gone. Emmett's tool chest was not at the foot of the bed where he always kept it. And there was a note on Emmett's pillow and there was a note on the kitchen table. The note on Emmett's pillow said, Dear Ma, I have not run away. I'll explain about the wash tub and broom when I see you Christmas Eve. There's plenty of frozen fish in the icebox. The note on the kitchen table said, Dear Emmett, I have not run away. I'll explain about your tool chest when I see you on Christmas Eve. There's clean underwear and shirts for you in your drawer. And that day, the few customers that Ma had had left put out the laundry on the land landings as they always did, but Emmett did not row by to pick it up. Upriver, past Osprey Point, where the river branched into, off into Swampland, was a little hut that Emmett and his friends had built for, a club, built for a clubhouse. And in the hunt was Wendell Coon blowing his jug, Harvey Muskrat was playing his kazoo, and Charlie Beaver was picking on his cigar box banjo. And Emmett 
was strumming on his washtub bass and worrying. Charlie Beaver was singing the words while he picked his banjo. Going to old man's possum shack, sister possum waiting out back. But Emmett was singing under his breath. Can't pay the rent if Ma can't scrub. Can't pay the rent with a hole in the tub. You better get with that beat, Emmett, if we're going to win. And well, thought Emmett, if the jug band didn't win, maybe he and Ma could go away someplace where things were better. As long as he had his tool chest, he could do odd jobs and they'd get along somehow. But Ma wasn't going to have a piano unless they won. Gotta win, said Emmett. He tried to keep his mind on Sister Possum. Now, while the Frogtown Hollow Jug Band was practicing upriver, Ma was downriver at Esther Snapper's house in Waterville, and she was sitting at her friend's sewing machine, making herself a dress to wear at the talent show. Don't quite understand this whole thing, Alice, said Esther. You pawned Emmett's tool chest so you could buy the dress material. That's right, said Ma. I'm going to sing in the talent show. If I win $50, Emmett's going to have that guitar with the mother of pearl inlays. But what if you don't win, said Esther. Well, I've still got my wash tub, said Ma. We can always move to some place where things are better. They surely couldn't be much worse. I don't know, said Esther. That sounds mighty chancy, but I certainly hope you win. Got to win, said Ma. When the dress was finished, she practiced her songs and gestures in front of Esther's mirror and tried hard not to think of Emmett's tool chest that Pa had left him. The night before Christmas Eve, the town hall in Waterville was all lit up for the talent show. There'd been a lot of talk about it, and all of the seats were taken long before the show was ready to begin. Backstage, the performers were getting ready to go on. The jugglers and acrobats were practicing their tricks, and the musicians were tuning up. And the dancers were making last-minute adjustments on their costumes. And Emmett was in the men's dressing room, and Mom was in the ladies, so they didn't see each other. Now, Emmett and Wendell and Harvey and Charlie had been practicing hard, and they were going to play Sister Possum first, and then Downstream Blues if they were asked for an encore. And Ma was ready, too, very stylish in her new dress. She was going to sing, We'll Go Fishing in the Moonlight, and Swim in Nellie Home. Now, everybody in the Frogtown Hollow Jug Band was nervous. We've got a good band, said Wendell Coon. I know we sounded very good the last time we practiced. Sure we did, said Charlie Beaver. We'll win, said Harvey Muskrat. Got to win, said Emmett. And just as he said that, a whole lot of big cases on wheels rolled in, with a whole lot of musicians following after. Who are you? asked Emmett. One of the musicians, a woodchuck, pulled the cover off a set of drums, and the big drum on the big drum was the name The Nightmare. We're from Re River Bend, said the woodchuck. Pete Squirrel and Jimmy Possum on the electric guitar, Herman Fats Porcupine on the electric bass, Jethro Gideon and Amos Moose on electric organ, Henry Jellohead Woodchuck, that's me, on drums, Mary Jane Chipmunk doing the vocals, and Fred Rabbit working the lights. You might as well go home, said Harvey Muskrat. Too late to back out now, said Emmett. Tried to think of ways to plug the hole in the wash tub. And then... It was time for the talent show to begin. Harrison Fox, the mayor of Waterville, thanked everyone who had helped put on the show and asked the audience to give everyone a big hand, wished them all a Merry Christmas, and sat down. The first act was Steve and Selma Rabbit, who tap danced. And then Bascom Crow recited a tragic poem Alfred and Deirdre Mole played a short, short piano works for four hands. Bertha Toad and Winston Newt did a combination acrobatic baton twirling act. After each act, the audience clapped a little and coughed a lot. <laughs> then came the Riverbed Nightmare, all of them wearing silver spangled costumes, and they played a song called River Bottom Rock, and while they played, the colored lights were making designs and patterns that jumped and shook and streaked like lightning on the walls and ceiling. 
The music roared and crashed and rattled the windows all over town while Mary Chipmunk moaned and hollered and screamed into the microphone. When they were done, the audience clapped and clapped for them to do an encore. And for their encore, the Riverbend Nightmare did Swampland stuff. The music roared and the lights flashed, the windows rattled again. And when the clapping finally died down, the silence filled the town hall like water filling up a boat with a big hole in the bottom. Ma sang her so song next. It was like a whisper far away that nobody could hear. And then came the Frogtown Hollow Jug Band, and when Emmett and Harvey and Wendell and Charlie played the music, it didn't seem to make any more of a sound than crickets and night peepers. And then there were some more acts, and somebody juggled, and somebody did magic tricks, and the juggists gave the $50 prize to the Riverbend Nightmare. And everybody wished everyone else a Merry Christmas, and they all went home. And Ma and the Frogtown Hollow Jug Band were left by themselves, standing in the street outside the town hall. Did you get my note? said Ma to Emmett. No, said Emmett. Did you get mine? No, said Ma. And so they explained to each other about the wash tub and the broom and the tool chest. And they left the lights of the town behind them and they all went down to the river and started walking home on the ice. Well, said Ma, we took a chance and we lost. That's how it goes. That's how it goes, said Emmett. It isn't going to be much of a Christmas for us this year, said Ma. I was hoping to get you that new guitar you liked. I was thinking of a new piano for you, said Emmett. I guess I ought to feel pretty bad, said Ma. But the funny thing is that I don't I feel pretty good. So do I, said Emmett. Harvey Muskrat took out his kazoo from his pocket and began to play Sister Possum Swat softly as they walked. That's a nice little tune, said Mom. How did the words go? And Charlie Beaver sang them for her, and then Ma sang. Going to Old Man Possum Shack, Sister Possum waiting out back. And then they all joined in the chorus. Rowing on the river, rowing on the water, going to dance the whole night long with old man possum's daughter. Let's try it with the whole band playing, said Ma. They were passing Doc Bullfrog's Riverside Rest and stopped by the boat landing. And up above them, the lit windows, in the lit windows, they could see everyone having a good time. They could hear the clatter of dishes and the tinkle of glasses and the sound of laughter. Harvey played the kazoo and Wendell blew his jug and Charlie picked his cigar box banjo. Emmett strummed his bass, and Ma sang as they all came, and they all came on strong with Sister Possum. Music took off in the cold, clear air over the frozen river, and for a while they forgot the hard year that they'd had and the poor Christmas that they could look forward to. No one noticed the doors of the Riverside Rest had opened and that Doc Bullfrog and his customers were listening. That's a mighty cheerful sound, said Doc Bullfrog as he came down to the boat landing. That's a real down-home sound. What do you call your group? Ma Otter and the Frogtown Hollow Boys, said Emmett. That's a good name, too, said Doc Bullfrog. How'd you like to play regular at the Riverside Rest? Is the pay regular when you play regular, said Emmett? It sure is, said Doc, and your meals are on the house. What do you think, boys, said Ma? I think we'd like that, said the boys. So would I, said Ma. Why not start tonight then, said Doc Bullfrog, after you have some dinner. And so they all went inside with Doc and had a good dinner. And the band played and Ma sang until it was very late. And when they left for home, they all had money in their pockets. Well, said Emma to Ma, it looks like I won't have to plug the hole in the wash, butt, wash tub, and I won't have to buy you a new one either. We've still got to have clean clothes to wear, said Ma. What am I going to wash them in? From now on, we're going to send our laundry out, said Emmett. Ma was quiet for a few minutes, and then she said, I think I'd like to do a song for Pa right here and now. And he took a chance on the snake oil, and you took a chance on a wash tub. He'd have been proud of us tonight. So Ma Otter 
and the Frogtown Hollow Boys stopped there on the ice at three in the morning of Christmas Eve, and they did downstream where the river meets the sea for Paul.